take a walk down by the sea, picking up colored shells in the sound. Well, we've just left Catskill and we're headed down the Hudson again. So far, we've got the wind coming from behind us, and uh, I don't see a huge amount of uh, waves right now. There is some um, swell coming in, but uh, we're gonna make a run for it. We gotta try and get us up. Keep going south. at the right time we're actually with the current so we're actually getting 9.6 knots typically without a current we'd be doing about um, maybe 8 or 7.8 knots so we're picking up we're just speed. passing Kingston the waves are starting to build a little bit here we are towing the dinghy it was actually creating an obstacle to uh, to see over the deck so I'll just tow down the Hudson River. Um, it's actually turned out to be a nice day. It was actually kind of windy this morning and uh, there was actually some building waves but it's, it's calmed down quite a bit now. It turned out very nice and it's warming up so yeah it's a pleasant ride and my taste is actually relaxing a little bit now. So. We're gonna try and sail for another two hours and that will get us down far enough so on Saturday hope to make it into uh, down by Sandy Hook area and then uh, we can make it run down the uh, New Jersey coast. inside here. I'm pretty sure this bridge is going right into that mountain. What amazing to have a strong marina. I wouldn't actually recommend this marina for one reason, no dock staff. So it was very windy, it was 25 or 30 knots. No, actually it wasn't that windy, maybe 20 knots. But that's windy without a bow, bow thruster. So they said, they gave us a slip that was maybe um, good for a 35 footer. And we've got a over 40 footer. And then the other problem was the slip was too uh, narrow. There was another dock in there, or sorry, another boat in there. So we got in there, got, tried to get in there, shoehorn in there, but uh, it was too small and then the wind was pushing us onto the other boat. Anyways, we got out of there. I don't know how we turned around the boat and we got the heck out of there. We found a different slip and uh, it was like five to five. And uh, we got the dock, got the boat docked. And then I ran up to the uh, clubhouse and they were like, the, the ladies were trying to leave. And um, so I managed to get a uh, courtesy badge just so we could get out of the marina and go and have some dinner. So yeah, I, I don't recommend this uh, marina. That'll be the last time I come here, uh, especially when it's windy. So. And anyways, we dock safely and um, who knows what tomorrow holds. Uh, we have to check to see if um, there was a bridge closing um, maybe about an hour uh, south of us. So hopefully we can get through the, uh, the bridge. Haverstraw Marina this morning. Um, last night was comfortable. However, this morning it's uh, about 10 Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's cold. And uh, it's not really going to be that enjoyable even with the uh, full enclosure. It's going to be chilly, so we're going to have to bundle up. And it's raining today. 
Not that great of visibility. Um, the full enclosure, the front um, plastic windshield or whatever, it's uh, it's not that great to uh, see through with the raindrops. Anyways, we're uh, heading for, I believe it's called the Highlands in uh, um, near York Harbor. Um, maybe the south, south side. That's where we're going today. And uh, probably either anchor or get a mooring ball. And uh, so that's the plan today. So now I just gotta fill up the water tanks. Hopefully the uh, holy This is Haverstraw Marina. It's actually a nice marina if it was managed correctly. Um, the problem was uh, that we had was the numbers on the docks are very tiny or non-existent. Um, they do have the docks identified as you know red, um, green, blue, and silver. However, when you're coming in, um, it's hard to uh, to find your slip. Now, when we came in. They gave us, uh, I think it was Silver 52, and Silver 52 was actually uh, shared by two, it was a double slip, I guess you would call it, and uh, there was always, there was already, a, I think it was a Beneteau 36 or 39 in it, so there wasn't much space left, and uh, we have a 14 and a half foot draft, or uh, beam, and uh, we could not fit in there, and the dock was actually too short, so we found uh, another slip, and then came up to the, uh, the marina to the office and the ladies were running out of the office it was like three minutes to five and they're already trying to escape so no dock hands to help us dock and uh, it was uh, it was blowing pretty good and if you can just imagine the narrow fairways here and uh, the wind was on our nose pushing our nose all over the place we couldn't control the boat because we had um, no bow thruster so we tried to use prop walk and whatnot to uh, to get the boat turned around and out of the fairway and into a, a better slip. Luckily there were some fellow boaters that could see that we were in trouble and uh, met us and pointed actually pointed out another dock to us that was non, not used and uh, they helped us uh, dock that. So yeah it was an interesting uh, um, afternoon yesterday trying to get the boat docked and then uh, anyways so they're not cheap here. I think our fee was uh, $107 for the night and uh, we're getting the hell out of here. There's greener pastures. Well, we just left Haverstraw Marina and it's kind of a cloudy, miserable day, but uh, right now we're getting a little bit of the tide going down, but it's gonna reverse any minute now. Uh, we've got about eight knots of speed right now over ground. And uh, it's gonna reverse any minute now and then we're gonna slow down to probably seven, six and a half knots. So we might have a, a late night trying to get to um, uh, New York Harbor. And we're going to try and make it to the Highlands. So off in the distance is Tappan Zee Bridge. Uh, we've been receiving alerts uh, from the Coast Guard yesterday that uh, they've closed it to Mariners. So hopefully we're not uh, receiving any of those messages today. Um, I think there were some structural problems that they've been working on and they closed it yesterday because of uh, safety, so hopefully when we get there, we can get through. Are you warm enough, hon? Well, the top of these bridge is open today, so that's great. Uh, apparently, the west side is the open section. That's why this boat is over here. Like, he must maybe be the, from the Coast Guard. He's protecting that side. There's some construction, I guess, happening over on that side, so. Anyways, we're going through here. We're coming up to the George Washington Bridge. Concord right there, the supersonic French plane. Your cruise ships. Okay, I'm good. the Brooklyn Bridge. It's a big container ship coming. I don't know what kind of wake he's going to make. This is 
Sandy Hook. Atlantic Highlands, just uh, south of New York City. You can probably see uh, New York City in the background right there, actually. Um, we had a rolling night. Um, it was actually maybe five or six knots of wind. Um, but for whatever reason, um, over here is another entrance to um, New York City Harbor. Like there's a, like a wall across here and there's another entrance. So there must have been waves coming in from that direction or I see waves coming in from hitting us on the, um, the starboard beam right now. So anyways, Mate wasn't too happy about the, uh, the anchoring last night. It was, it was uncomfortable for her and we were actually cold. It, it, it got actually chilly. So I tried not to run the diesel generator because um, I feel as if we don't have enough uh, battery capacity. We have 300 amp hours, which gives us theoretically 150 amp hours. And uh, I wanted to just wait until early in the morning and then just start it up. So that's what I did. So we got the, uh, the cabin warm uh, earlier in the morning. And then once uh, Maite woke up, uh, started the engine and the ran the gas generator and uh, charged up the batteries as well as uh, turned on the hot water tank. And uh, the engine also helped uh, charge up or uh, warm up the hot water tank. So, anyways, so she's up and getting a shower right now. And uh, now I've got to <clears throat> fix something on the mainsail. Um, and uh, then we're off to, uh, I think it's called Garnet Inlet. That's where we're headed today. We can't make it to Atlantic City. You gotta get up really early in the morning to do a day sail to Atlantic City. It's about a 12 hour trip and uh, my day just doesn't wanna do a 12 hour trip. So we're gonna do a six hour trip and then we'll end up uh, staying in Garnet Bay for our marina or bay or whatever anchoring for probably two days because there's some weather coming in and um, we'd, we'd have uh, probably 20 knots on the nose to get to Atlantic City and uh, no, that's not. Well, we're leaving the Atlantic Highlands. There's lots of mooring balls here, but uh, they were all filled up last night, so we uh, we anchored and. That was kind of rolly, right, huh? How was your night? Pretty disgusting, eh? <laughs> oh boy. Not how it was. There was lots of talk of mutiny, I'll tell you that much. It was, wasn't good. I had to, sh had to, just had to hide all the sharp instruments. It was a disgusting day and night and morning. It was from the rock. Atlantic Islands looks like from a distance. So we're just going to go past Sandy Hook and then head to Starboard as a channel out to the Atlantic Ocean. So I think the, uh, the end of Sandy Hook is right there. We're just going to follow the shipping channel out this way. Oh, actually something just jumped. I don't know what that was. along the Jersey coast. We've seen hundreds. And this is just along the shoreline. There's hundreds out there. Well, it's two in the afternoon on a Sunday. Here's some down the Jersey coast. It's actually fairly calm right now. We've got a south right now but uh, it's not that strong. But our main out actually had the uh, full main up but uh, one of the bats popped out and uh, had to lower it down put the first reef in it. I'll fix that bat in pocket later. Took the head cell down so it's clapping.
winds are good because the current and the wind are going the same direction, so that one shouldn't um, um, make these the waves stand up. So. at High Bar Marina Yacht Club tonight. We called, I don't know, three hours ago and we arranged it. We need a 30 amp service. Yep. $3.50 a foot. Okay. We needed a place to stay because uh, we're not going on to Atlantic City. Guess what? The guy says he has to leave early. All right. Gives us a slip. Have a good night. Well, guess what? 30 amp service does not exist on, on the dock. It's a 50 amp service and we don't have an adapter. Well, this is Barnegate Bay on a miserable afternoon. We are not heading out. Winds are 25 to 30 out on the ocean side. There's the inlet just around to the right of the um, <clears throat> lighthouse. Most of the shops in this town are closed until the season's end. So I guess they left all left on Labor Day. And uh, yeah, they've basically rolled up their sidewalks and uh, not much going on. Well, it's a gorgeous day, just a little on the windy side. Well, we're about to depart uh, Barnegate Inlet. Um, it's actually cold this morning. There's some cold front uh, coming through and uh, there's actually some gale warnings But uh, we're just sailing off the shore off the coast and um, the winds coming um, off the shore the uh, waves are coming off the shore and uh, we're, on, we're, on, we're only going to Atlantic City, so we should be in there in about uh, four or five hours I'm just gonna run down the coast and um, When we're leaving the inlet here, you just have to make sure that uh, the wind does not oppose the current. So right now the the current is um, ebbing. I guess that would be the term, ebbing. So uh, current is going out of the bit, out of the uh, inlet, as well as the uh, wind is also pushing out of the inlet. So that's fine. Um, but if they're opposing, the uh, the waves can heap up. The uh, the dock master told me of uh, just a recent incident where a Canadian had come in on a sailboat sideways somehow he the waves um, can actually uh, push your stern around and uh, broadside you with uh, huge waves and uh, apparently he was taking on water so I, I'm not sure how he got out of that circumstance we um, we do have uh, a sea tow or no what do we got boat US um, is our towing company um, so if we ever run into a situation we can immediately call them but uh, in an inlet like that. Uh, just leaving the inlet. I was just stopping to uh, need a tugboat towing a barge. And it looks like there's a chain of them. Oh, wow. That thing's, look at the big long pipe behind it. Okay. okay. High Bar Barnegat or Yacht Club Barnegat Inlet. It's nice. It's it's very nicely done, but very expensive. Like it's three fifty a foot. And if you do get in there and you can't get out, it's gonna you're gonna run up your uh, run up a huge bill. And then I think it's another seven dollars for electricity, ah, depending on which it's service. Like you gotta have the dollars. But you can also anchor. You can also go in there and anchor. You just have to be careful with the inlet and time the tides and the winds correctly. We we were lucky. It seems like um, the tides go out in the morning and in the evening they come in, and that just so happens to co coincide with what we were doing. But if you were trying to do the reverse of that and high winds, uh, yeah, don't do it. Because there, I think at one time I seen about uh, seven knots, sorry, seven feet of uh, water under us. So if you were in a wave and there was a trough there, I don't know if you'd hit bottom or I really don't know, but it is a dangerous inlet. Don't, don't, don't make a very few hours like me. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, there's a lot of uh, hardy sailors who are going to just by bypass all of this and go right to uh, Cape May 
if you got the right boat and you got the right crew, you can just go right up to Cape May and uh, to anchor there in front of the coast coast guard station. And then in the morning, you can go through the canal. But our boat is too high. The mast is uh, 62 and a half feet high, so we can't get in that inlet. So that means we got to go around. Anyways, we'll deal with Cape May when it comes. But right now, Atlantic City. You feel hard? Or hard seller? Is that the phrase? Hardy. Oh, okay. <laughs> If you're a hardy hard seller, do it. But you if you're a princess, do it. <laughs> start at burn, stop at burn and get in that. <laughs> it's for princesses. Ah, <laughs> uh, princesses don't wear this kind of like this kind of outfit. That's true. Hello. Yeah, you're half and half. Hello. <laughs> Ain't no left Barnegat Inlet on the, the Atlantic and we're heading southwest to Atlantic City. It should only take us uh, maybe three and a half, four hours. Um, we did try sailing down the coast and we still have our main up but the, um, the jib was flapping. This, the, the wind is actually, we're pointing too high. So uh, yeah, I couldn't get the, um, I even have a tweaker to try and bring the jib in and it wouldn't so I'd have to I'd have to uh, sail out offshore and the waves uh, are pretty pretty large um, 20 miles offshore so I'm not going out there I'm hugging the coast and uh, they might be uh, maybe a foot maybe two feet right now right under just coming straight right at us so yeah we're motoring and we're uh, we got the main up I think yeah, we're doing uh, 7.2 knots right now so yeah three and a half hours we should get there unless the conditions change the, 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 the will not change yeah okay that's well there's Atlantic City off in the distance roughly about two hours if we can keep this speed up oh my god Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really helps. Take a walk down.